This is sort of a continuation uh, on the subject about raw food eating that we're going to be discussing today. Those of you who listened to the show last week, if you still have an interest in getting raw milk delivered here in Louisville, uh, we still have some more slots available. If you email me at onair at superhumanradio.com, I'll send you all the information. Uh, We have, I think, uh, four or five uh, slots left uh, for families who are interested in raw milk, if you heard the show last week. Well, while we may not speak about it, I think that uh, all of us realize that primitive man ate all of his food, meat included, uh, raw. You know, food preparation was basically catch it, kill it, and sink your teeth into it. Today, in many cultures around the world, there are groups of people who still eat this way. Raw meat, raw foods in general are commonplace. There's a resurgence of raw food eating here in the United States and in North America in general. While it's not the subject of open conversation at functions and and around the water cooler, uh, when people are home in the the, uh, comfort of their own homes, these people will eat food raw. Now, we're not just talking about veggies here. We're talking about eating raw meat, which kind of flies in the face of uh, what is considered... Uh, common knowledge about food preparation today. And I will tell you that those of you who are squeamish or weak of the stomach, listener discretion is advised because we're going to be talking about some subject matter today that you may find, well, a little shocking. So you've been warned. My guest today is Randy Roach. We've had Randy on the show before. He's a friend of the show. And I've learned so much about nutrition just from the discussions that we've had around the show from Randy. Randy is a, an advocate of na- native nutrition. Uh, I guess that's the, the way it, it's called. But uh, basically, he is a raw food advocate and eater. He's also uh, a uh, historian when it comes to physical culture and nutrition. In the past, I've called him a bodybuilding historian, but that's way too narrow of a title for this guy because his, his knowledge about physical culture, and you can't talk about physical culture, you can't talk about any of those subjects without talking about nutrition, and his knowledge is just so vast and so well-developed that, uh, that I've stopped saying that he's a bodybuilding historian. He's a historian as it relates to physical culture and the nutritional protocols that, that revolve around that. And uh, we're going to be talking to him today about raw food eating. He's also the author of a much-anticipated book that we've talked about on the show before called Muscle, Smoke, and Mirrors. If you're interested in learning more about the book, it's supposed to be released in 2007. Uh, muscle smoke and mirrors dot com and you can uh, get more details about it there and we're speaking today with randy from his home outside of toronto how are you doing randy very good today carl thanks yeah you know randy originally as you know we had a, a, a different show slated for today but i received so many emails comments uh comments on forums that i that i uh, partake in and and Everyone said to me, you know, you know, the show on raw milk was great. I got a lot of positive reviews. We got a lot of people who signed up for the, the milk co-op here for the, the share, cow share program. But I had more people say to me, did that guy say he left a chicken breast out on the countertop all night and then ate it the next day raw? And I said, yeah. And, and right then I realized that we didn't do enough of a job last week. We talked about raw milk, but we really didn't talk about the full effect of raw food eating. So today, I want to discuss with you these subjects. First of all, who are the fathers of modern raw eating or native nutrition today? Today? Yeah. Uh, like contemporary 2006? Well, who, who reintroduced it into our society here? Because obviously we did it back in, when, you know, primitive man did it. But then, it, 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 I guess, uh, civilization, if you will, uh, opted to prepare and cook food. But how, how did it make its resurgence here? Well, it really hasn't made a big resurgence. Um, there's just a number of advocates today. Dr. Ajans von der Plan is probably one of the biggest. But there's always been a number of raw food eaters. Today, like we talked on the phone the other day, a lot of people say, okay, how did primitive man eat? You know, we can't, do we use anthropology to, uh, to look back or, and try to analyze what they ate? Well, we don't have to do that because we have a number of cultures still around. They're... There's not too many left that haven't been decimated, but when Dr. Weston Price um, traveled in the 30s, he was, it was a unique time because technology still gave him the camera, and 
we still had not destroyed everybody. So there was a lot of primitive cultures still out there and eating in the way they have for several thousand years. And a lot of them ate raw meat. Lots of them had different ways of preparing foods, and a lot of them cooked them as well. But, for example, the Eskimo, he would cook uh, some of his meat, but primarily he ate it raw. The Samburu in Africa, the Maasai, a lot of raw milk, and they would also do some raw meat, sometimes up to one or two pounds a day. The, the Nurs in Africa, who reached actually a height, like an average height of like seven feet, seven feet six. I think the women were even six foot three. They ate a lot of raw liver. So there is still cultures around today that eat it. Now, in North America, it's always the, the Indian ate a lot of raw meat as well. Really? But today, it's in bodybuilding, you can tell Eugene Sandow, who we consider our basically our father of bodybuilding. He was a vaudeville performer at the turn of the century. Now, he denounced it, which means that people were doing it at that time. He said he called it a foolishness of eating raw meat, or very rare meat, or raw eggs and such when they're... Obviously, they were in the strength business, so there were people doing it at that time that he would make such a statement. But Bernard McFadden, he was a raw food eater in terms of raw milk and a lot of raw vegetables, but I believe he cooked his meat uh, there's talk that our man Taney was telling me Jack LaLanne and, and Russ Warner would go down to the stockyards and get blood when they were doing their bodybuilding. But our man Taney, but from the bodybuilding perspective, he was a real raw food eater. He went. He was one of the original guys at Muscle Beach. His, his brother Vic Taney had the gym chain. Our man was a wrestler, and he went to the Hawaiian Islands in 1947. And he was really blown away by the Samoans who were in the islands at that time, too, just after the war. And he, these guys were eating raw meat and raw everything, raw beetles, and our man was impressed with their with their health and their strength. So he came home, and he shut off his stove, and he ate everything raw. He read Dr. Weston Price, uh, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. He said that became his Bible. Two years later, he walked away the top titles. The Mr. USA was a big title at that time. Gramic had just won it the year before. And the Mr. Pro, Mr. USA. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're coming up on a break here, Randy. I, I, I don't want to interrupt you. I want you to stay with that. We're about, the, we're gonna come back with that when we come back from the breaks. Okay. Okay. Hi, right, we're talking with Randy Roach today about raw food eating. You're listening to Superhuman Radio. We'll be right back. By now, you're aware of the cognitive benefits of nootropics. My friends over at Pure Nootropics are giving my listeners 10 to 30% off their already great prices on over 70 high-quality nootropics. Stock up on DHM so you can feel good after your holiday celebration or try the Superhuman Stack to boost your brain and energize your day. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash pure, that's P-U-R-E, and start saving today. TaylorMade Health is focused on making sure you're able to perform and look your best. They are a leader in game-changing supplements and cosmetic products. Whether you want to increase strength, expedite recovery, facilitate soft tissue repair, or reduce deep wrinkles, TaylorMade Health has you covered. TaylorMade Health is also the home to Dr. Seed's products such as BPC, BPC Plus, and the Chill Pill. All of my listeners can now get 20% off their first order with code TRY20. That's T-R-Y-2-0. This code can even be used on subscription orders. Visit shrnetwork.biz slash try 20 today and use code try20 for 20 percent off your first order do you remember those delicious toaster pastries you had when you were a kid you know the rectangular sugar-filled snacks well guess what legendary foods has just made low carb toaster pastry this is the first of its kind and honestly these things are amazing they have three to four net carb less than one gram of sugar and nine grams of protein you can eat them right out of the wrapper or lightly toast them The only question is, which flavor, strawberry or brown sugar cinnamon? They're available at eatlegendary.com and Amazon. New Mass Pro Synthogen X2 just upped its own legendary game. To distance itself even further from the rest of the pack, Synthogen X2 now has double the key active ingredients. If you've ever wondered what steroid-like recovery feels like, Synthogen X2 delivers. See why others compare it favorably to powerful bodybuilding drugs at synthogen.com. Mass Pro Synthogen. Would you train with it? 
you'll gain with it. Are you ready to change the way you age? Of course you are. That's why you're here. Juvacel is a new first-of-its-kind dietary supplement that includes 10 key research-backed ingredients shown in studies to support lifespan. Things like resveratrol, fisetin, quercetin, terostilbene, sulforaphane, turmeric, all in a single dose. You may have some of these ingredients already, but Juvacel is the first to combine them all into a single product to support your lifespan. It's vegan, non-GMO, and sustainable. Live better, longer, with Juvacell. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash live better. Use code SHR and save 20% off today. When craving a snack, reach for Select Savory Snacks Sugar-Free Biltong, the healthy alternative to sugar-laden beef jerky. They use a fattier cut of beef, making it more tender and flavorful. For mealtime, choose from their 63 seasonings, which are sugar and additive-free. From Chipotle rub to savory pumpkin spice, you'll find an option to suit your palate. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash SSS today. Use code SHR15 to save 15% on any meat snack or seasoning. Savor the flavor today. This is the Superhuman Channel. Where you're listening to the Superhuman Channel. Don't hate us because we feel good. Listen strong. It's Superhuman Radio. At that time, the Mr. America? Yeah, and the Mr. Pro USA. That was the end of our man's uh, bodybuilding career. He went on to uh, participate in the May West show with the other bodybuilders, Jill Gold and Mickey Hargitay in the mid-50s with me. But, and he wrote a lot for a weeder. But today, the, the important thing with our man is that he's 87 years old today. He's still pumping iron. He still weighs 185 pounds. And that's the encouraging part. Raw food eaters do not necessarily... Uh, eat in this fashion because they want to live forever. The bottom line is they want the quality. They want to be disease-free, and that is pr- probably the primary reason why most people eat raw, uh, raw. That's why I do it. I don't care. To, I don't need to live to be 150, 200 years old. I just want. I already have. I'm considered. Well, I am blind, uh, but I don't want any more diseases. So for me, it's worth it just for doing that. Uh, not to mention the incredible effects it has in bodybuilding. Okay, now you realize that you just said something that a lot of people are listening to, and they're going to go, wait a minute, if you're talking about not wanting disease, but you're eating raw food, because, you know, um, uh, currently the media, the FDA, everybody tells us about safe food handling and cook your meat and all this other stuff. And so that those sound like non sequiturs probably to most people who are listening. So wh- why is it that eating raw food actually is healthier? Because the food is alive and it's biologically active, enzymes are a big thing in raw food eating. Today, our society doesn't say anything about it for a number of reasons. Number one is sheer ignorance. Number two is the food industry likes things just fine the way it is because they have nothing to do with enzymes because they cook and process everything and they can make much more money the way things are. Because to live in a in a raw food culture, the obviously the... Uh, the, um, it's indigenous. You, you only have a small cottage industry locally. You wouldn't have nationalized food supplies because the food would be much more delicate in handling. But we've all been scared to death, all of us. You know, you have a piece of raw chicken on the counter. Like, God, scour everything after that. You can get salmonella. And we're all like that because we were raised that way to believe that um, germs are bad. But germs are not bad. And there is an entire other story to the germ story that totally counters Louis Pasteur. He was adamantly opposed by a prominent French biologist, uh, Antoine Bechamp and Claude Bernard at that time, who said the germ is nothing. It's the inner terrain. It's the health of the inner terrain. Pasteur put forth that germs cause disease. Those gentlemen said no, germs were the result of disease. They were there because of the disease but they didn't cause the disease, the toxicity. The internal terrain was contaminated somehow, and that drew a drawing. Like Dr. Ron said last week, no swamp, no mosquitoes. The stagnant water will draw the mosquitoes. The toxic tissue will draw bacteria, and it gets into the whole theory that goes back well over 150 years that the body itself produces the bacteria and viruses, parasites, uh, moles, yeast, to consume toxic tissue. And that is diametrically opposed to what we are taught today. 
But the more and more people are getting to know that there's much more to the germ theory than what's put out there because obviously we all know we have germs in us. Now, you, you, who's, the, who's the, uh, the scientist that you told me drank something uh, to show that, uh, what, what was that? I, I'm sorry, I don't recall. Claude the... Bernard. Claude Bernard was a, um, he's either a biochemist at that time. He was really into metabolism. In fact, William Banting, who started the, uh, William Harvey did one of the first full carbohydrate diets in, that, <clears throat> in the mid-19th century, went to a seminar by, from, given by Bernard. Bernard stood in front of his colleagues and his peers, and he said, the germ is nothing. It's the internal terrain. And he drank down a glass of cholera. A glass of cholera, in other words, <clears throat> cholera yeah, so infected water or whatever. And yeah, and apparently on um, Louis Pasteur's deathbed, he also recanted and said Claude Bernard was correct. The germ is nothing. The terrain is everything. Or towards that effect, I don't know what his exact quote was. I think I've heard a couple of versions, but apparently that's what he said on his deathbed, that the germ did not cause disease. But we would have been led to to believe that. Many researchers from uh, Bernard Bechamp to Gunther Enterlein to Royal Rice, the uh, Rice technology with his microscope at the time, they were claiming to see what they call pleomorphism, the body literally transmutating one microorganism into another, potentially even red blood cells. One of them claimed to see a red blood cell turn into a bacteria and turn back again. Uh, today, guest on the scenes in Montreal, he has the he developed a dark film microscope. He's got a tremendous microscope that he can still witness. He's labeled these things semitids, these tiny little microorganisms that consume. And our body is built to defend itself, not just with the immune system, but through a very proper internal terrain that's alkaline and hostile. It's I don't say hostile, but it's uh, it's it's health friendly in terms of keeping out it can be contaminated through toxicity and the body will defend it by producing bacteria to consume the toxicity and we unfortunately it's the bacteria and, and the viruses that produce the symptoms and that's what we identify as disease we look at the symptoms and say that's a disease let's fire at the symptoms with, with drugs or when the symptoms are probably just a reaction of the body fighting off the 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 the, 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 the disease that it's it's working on in other words yeah, it, it, along those lines, it's like the same with fever. Like the body probably produces the fever to control its environment, to control the bacteria, because it can't. The body temperature can't go too high, or the enzy enzymes will die, and that's we die. It goes too low. Same thing. Our body has to operate in a certain body temperature, or we cannot survive. So enzymes are very sensitive to temperature. That's why when you cook food, you destroy them. Now we're about three minutes away from a break here. How long okay. have you been uh, a raw food eater? Four years. I was drinking raw milk earlier than that, but four years for raw meat. And, you're, and, and, and you eat raw chicken, correct? Yeah, I don't eat a lot of raw chicken right now. I eat a lot of raw beef because uh, it's, I just think it's better for bodybuilding. But, I, yeah, I've eaten a lot of raw chicken. I've eaten up to one or two pounds a day sometimes. But. You know, the, 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 concept of, uh, you know, the concept of eating raw food, meaning that you have to, get, you have, to have access to fresher food, would yeah. create a resurgence of the need for the small family farm again, being in, in the local area where you could gather it. And I guess really that's the resistance by the food industry uh, because it would decentralize control of, of uh, the food. That it's, people it eat. doesn't have to be that way, though. Like, uh, in terms of raw meat, it can, still be, it can still be nationalized because we have fast transportation and we have cooling trucks and stuff like that, just as long as it's not frozen because if you freeze it, then you ruin it. But uh, it can still be at a, at a pretty large federal level with the, with the meat and stuff because if they wanted to do it, they could. They have the, these aren't stupid people. <laughs> They're just yeah. greedy people, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take a break here in a couple of moments. But uh, who who actually got you started on uh, raw food eating? It was Dr. Ron Schmidt. Oh, really? Yeah, he's just not a, a grass farmer. He's quite a guy. He's um, he's taught a lot of the naturopathic colleges, and he's been a raw food eater for quite a number of years. Uh, I then I did a lot of work to, talking with Ajahn Svanderplanis, who's probably the premier raw food guru out there today. He's quite amazing in his abilities. And there's another gentleman who I've learned a lot from, who kind of wishes to remain nameless. He just kind of works under the scene. Then you mentioned someone a moment ago. I'm sorry. The, 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 you mentioned someone a moment ago that uh, former bodybuilder. You said that um, he's still he's he's in his 80s now. He's our man Tanny, Tanny's younger does, brother. He's 80. He's about 87. And he's still pumping iron. Does he eat raw? Does he still eat raw food? Oh yeah, he'll have cooked once or twice a week, but he eats raw meat, raw milk. You know, and most of it's raw. That's he says amazing. He's got two girlfriends. Two girlfriends, right? Oh in, wow! In the early 70s, who follow his eating. He says they're beautiful. If you do not age, Ron hit it right on the head last week. He said, you can't talk about anti-aging if you're not including raw food eating. Forget it. You're not going to do it through drugs and even hormones or growth hormones. If you don't have raw, 
food in there, you're going to have a hard time getting what you're looking for. There. When we come back, Randy, I want you to give our listeners a glimpse of uh, what a daily menu looks like in your life, okay? Sure. We're talking with Randy Roach about raw food eating. You're listening to Superhuman Radio. We'll be right back. Do you remember those delicious toaster pastries you had when you were a kid? You know, the rectangular sugar-filled snacks? Well, guess what? Legendary Foods has just made low-carb toaster pastry. This is the first of its kind, and honestly, these things are amazing. They have three to four net carb, less than one gram of sugar, and nine grams of protein. You can eat them right out of the wrapper or lightly toast them. The only question is, which flavor? Strawberry or brown sugar cinnamon? They're available at eatlegendary.com and Amazon. Quest Nutrition makes bars, cookies, chips, and pizzas out of complete dairy-based proteins. Our products minimize net carbs and sugar without sacrificing taste. Each delicious chocolate-flavored chip, cookie chunk, and crunchy crumble is custom-made to maintain Quest macros. It's time to enjoy foods that work for you, not against you. It's time to enjoy your Quest. New Mass Pro Synthogen X2 just upped its own legendary game. To distance itself even further from the rest of the pack, Synthogen X2 now has double the key active ingredients. If you've ever wondered what steroid-like recovery feels like, Synthogen X2 delivers. See why others compare it favorably to power Powerful bodybuilding drugs at Synthogen.com. Mass Pro Synthogen. When you train with it, you'll gain with it. Whether your goal is to build muscle or burn fat, you'll find everything you need at Redcon 1. Need help getting a good night's sleep? Try Fade Out or the most popular pre-workout supplement on the market today, Total War. Sign up for their new transformation challenge and win $10,000 or shop for apparel that people at the gym will know that you are serious about your training. Need a testosterone booster that works? Check out Boomstick. Whatever you need, you'll find the best quality supplements on the market at Redcon 1. Go to Redcon 1 com. That's R-E-D-C-O-N, the number one, dot com, or go to superhumanradio.net and click the Redcon 1 banner ad today. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said that all disease begins in your gut. That's why it's so important to protect yourself with boosted immune system. If you drink coffee, tea, smoothies, or really any beverage in the morning, and you're looking for a tasty way to start your day and defend yourself against harmful bacteria, then I have just the thing for you to try. It's called the Ultimate Immunity Protection Stack, and it was put together by my friends over at Bioptimizers. Their immunity stack has three products which contain over 18 natural herbs and probiotic blends formulated to fight and eliminate bad bacteria like E. coli, salmonella, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, and repair compromised gut lining. It also includes psychobiotics, which help increase serotonin and happy chemicals to naturally elevate your mood, performance, and cognitive function with no side effects or dependencies. It's a great addition to your morning routine, and it tastes amazing. Just stir it into any beverage, sip, and enjoy. It's the ultimate way to boost your immune system right before the holiday season. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash protect and use code SHR10 and save an extra 10 percent off on the you won't find this deal or stack anywhere else for fast shipping and the best deal go to shrnetwork.biz slash protect today by now you're aware of the cognitive benefits of nootropics my friends over at pure nootropics are giving my listeners 10 to 30 percent off their already great prices on over 70 high quality nootropics stock up on dhm so you can feel good after your holiday celebration or try the superhuman stack to boost your brain and energize your day go to shrnetwork.biz slash pure that's p-u-r-e and start saving today this is the superhuman channel where we use oxygen for the power of good your radio just got ripped it's superhuman radio You're listening to Superhuman Radio. The website is www.superhumanradio.com. We're talking today with Randy Roach, and we're talking about raw food eating. So, Randy, what would you have for breakfast this morning? I had when I got up. I did do a couple of training sessions today. So I had about eight ounces of raw green juice that I had with celery and parsley in it. Juice is used for alkalinity, making the body alkaline as opposed to acidic. Most people eat a very acidic diet. It's good to have fruits and vegetables, fresh juices for alkalinity. Then about 11 o'clock, I had about half a pound of raw tuna. Now, do you get where, where do you get the raw tuna? I guess raw tuna has got to be easier to come by because of sushi. I mean, there's got to be places yeah, to get that easy. Yeah. There's no such thing as organic tuna, you know, as long as it's wild. You know, yeah, wild, not farm. farm. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, what will you eat later on today? 
Probably some uh, beef, probably about another half a pound of beef or a pound of beef. Typically, uh, the stand, there's a standard temp plate set down by many of the, uh, the teachers in the raw food camps. They like to go with alkalinity or green juices first, and about an hour or 90 minutes later, they'll have a raw meat. And they like eating it with raw fat. That's why a lot of the bodybuilders, Mr. Ronda and Rio Blair, they were knowledgeable. They knew raw fats were almost essential to have with protein. And after raw honey also is used as an enzyme, not as a sugar in the raw food camps, unless you cook it. And usually within about an hour or an hour and a half after, remember with raw food, it is out of your stomach quick. It's not like cooked food that sits in there for a lot longer. So about an hour and a half, two hours later, they'll have like raw milk or raw dairy or a raw smoothie, which is a raw eggs blended with a honey or a fruit or a tomato, which are very good, or cream, stuff like that. But that's the cycle, that one, two, three punch, then a gap. They can do maybe two or sometimes three cycles because in raw food eating, yo-yo dieting is promoted. Yo-yo dieting in normal society is destructive because it's just everything's done backwards. But in raw food eating, yo-yo dieting is promoted for detoxification of now, the body. Now expand on that. When you say yo-yo dieting, do you mean that you go through fasting periods? or Up, up and down in the body fat. Up, down, up, down. Put fat on, take it off. Put fat on, take it off. Now. Everybody in North America does that anyways because they can't stay on a diet. And the problem in dieting today is most people will restrict their diet, a diet that they cannot follow, but they start off very emotional and excited about it, and they realize, okay, why am I on this? They usually quit the diet, and then they go and they eat junk. But they don't realize they put their body in a very desensitized state, and it takes in calories very quickly, and they rebuild with junk. They do pizza, alcohol, hydrogenated oils, and that's what the body rebuilds on and then they'll go through the whole process again the next year. Well, I got to lose weight, and they'll do it again, and it gets very degenerative over the years. But in raw food eating, if you're using raw foods, it's a totally different story because you can take the body fat off, which is at that time you were eating certain foods to bring toxicity out of the body because the body will store it in in body fat and such. Right. So when you take it off, it comes out. But then you can put you can eat a lot of calories. You can put on body fat because if the food is alive and healthy, it's you're not going to get sick. You put body fat on, but there's nothing wrong with that. And you can, it's, it's, it's a far safer way. And in bodybuilding, it's called, we call it rebounding and cycling. If you're very careful and watch what you're doing, it can be very effective in building muscle. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of people that, uh, obviously, you, you, a lot of people who still subscribe to the idea that in order to build muscle, you have to put on some fat anyway, uh, and be in a hypercaloric uh, state. So that, that, that would work with that, obviously. Yeah, to build muscle, basically, I keep saying, you just have to be healthy. If you're healthy, you can build muscle quite easy. And with raw food eating, it's like, it's, it's it's far superior than anything I've ever done, or I wouldn't stick with it. Like uh, when I first started, I didn't like it. I didn't even want to do it. I was doing it because of the eyesight situation. Right. But I realized, wow, after a while, I thought, I'm, I'm, things are changing here. My vitality is just really going up. My strength is going up, and I'm able to eat more meat than I ever was before, even cooked. And I found man, I'm starting to recover, recover very quickly in my workouts, and we. We kind of touched upon this topic about what's coming out of the Eastern Bloc countries about systemic enzymes and recovery. Well, you can't get any better systemic enzymes than by eating raw food because it relaxes the pancreas, because the, the pancreas and its proteolytic enzymes do much more than just digest food. They have interaction with systemic activity. And not only that, the raw food comes with its array of enzymes that contribute as well. So it's a whole different dynamic going there, and that's why the raw food camps they have a high, high success rate in treating cancer victims, even ones that have been sent home after chemo because there's so much power in enzymes. But that's, that's a complex story. I'm not really an expert in that area. I don't treat cancer patients, and right. I'm just down there lifting weights and eating raw meat. <laughs> you know, I had a thought um, a couple days, well, after you and I spoke the first time about this. Um, raw milk actually has uh, uh, certain components in it that will fight off uh, bad bacteria will defend uh, so that the calf that is being suckled uh, is is not being harmed by any other product that is being ingested at the same time. It's the, the, the environment of milk. If milk on grass, I believe they tried introducing listeria or E. coli and, and looked at salmonella and looked a day later it wasn't there. Right. The environment wasn't right for it to right. flourish. Well, I got to thinking about this. You know, the, the the issue about eating raw pork, obviously, there's the, the potential to contract uh, trichinosis. So I would imagine that pork is not one of the choices for raw food eating. Am I am I correct about that? Yeah, I don't I don't eat raw pork. This the scavenger animals I, I usually stay away from. Right. They're usually pretty clean animals. But here's what I got to thinking about. I mean, looking back 
at the at, at some of the religions that uh, well m- m- most notably uh, co- uh, uh, kosher uh, uh, style uh, cook uh, uh, preparation. If you look at kosher foods, you know you can't uh, uh, meat and dairy do not mix together. But the reality is that it's probably wise to use milk in the pr- preparation of raw meats because it will probably defend against some of the bacteria that you may not want to ingest along with the raw meat. Is that is there any validity to that? The, with the, I think there's a biblical passage that they talk about boiling the goat, the kid, in the mother's milk. And I think it has a lot to do with moralistic views as to it. Just the idea of taking the baby and boiling it in his mother's milk, that was a strong, strong statement. But in raw feeding, you can... I don't like mixing raw milk with raw meat. It doesn't work as well for me. Uh, I have some friends who can do it fine. I can do some raw cream. There are certain fats that I don't mix with raw meat. And that's one of the things in raw food eating. It makes you very tuned in to your body. And that is so important. What works best for you? For me, I found this raw meat, period. You know, I, I, I ate raw else. meat. I think I shared this with you already. But when I was a kid, my mother used to make meatballs. She would take egg and chopped meat and uh, and some breadcrumb and, and some seasoning, and she'd put it in a big bowl, and then she'd slowly roll out meatballs and put them in the in the frying pan. And I would always go over and grab a, you know, a big hunk of meat and throw it in my mouth as a kid, and I did that regularly. And I was thinking about this during the break. I ate raw chopped meat all the way up until the point where um, I'm trying to think how far back, but when it, it, propaganda about you know, E. coli in, uh, in, in meat uh, and, and it started to uh, uh, propagate. And I thought to myself, well, now I can't do that anymore. Gee, the meat has changed. Somehow the meat has changed from when I was a kid till, till today. But the reality is I ate a lot of raw beef as a, as a child, and, uh, and I never got sick from it. No, I haven't been sick in four years. And I have people, <laughs> a lot of people even sneeze on me because I'm a trainer, and they'll sneeze on me, and they're sick, and it just, and I said, you can sneeze on me. I'm not going to get sick. It's, it's, that's not what makes you sick. There's a, again, there's whole other theories of why people are getting sick and how. And, and we say, oh, uh, germs flying around the air. Well, there are other theories about being cyclical and climatic changes when certain cultures it triggers cleansing. I don't know what the whole truth is. It's, it's, it is a, it's a big puzzle. And I just know that what we're taught in society is only a small aspect and probably mostly wrong. But I, like I said, I don't know all the mechanisms involved here. I don't talk about this topic like every day, like so talking about the inner terrain and the toxicities. Typically, m- many people aren't interested in that. Just talking with you, it's i got to dig a lot of it up, you know. Right. But most people, you know, they turn their nose, oh, you're eating raw meat, oh, you're worried about getting sick. And I said, if I was getting sick, I wouldn't do it. Right. I wouldn't do it. The problem is I haven't been sick since I've started it. So if I decided I wanted to start to uh, become a raw food eater, and obviously the veggies and the honey, that's an easy one, but I want to start yeah. eating raw meat, where do I obtain my meat to make sure that it, it's the highest quality, it's, the, it's, it's going to be the best choice for a raw food eater? Well, you can, you can talk to your, if, if you know a butcher and you trust a butcher, he, a lot of them guys will know where you can get good sources of meat. If you're surrounded by farms, you can talk with those farms, there'll be biodynamic farms and there'll be the organic farms, well, they'll... They'll slaughter their animals, and they'll, you, you can get good quality as long as it's not laced with drugs. You're not going to get it pristine and grass-fed, drug-free, available all the time, as long as it's not loaded with drugs and it's, the cows are raised in a, decent, in a decent manner. I usually tell people they don't have to start with raw. They don't have to eat raw meat, period. I tell them to get more raw food in their diet because of the enzymes, and even if they take, like, strawberries, Raw honey, blend it with a few raw eggs. You don't even know you're drinking raw eggs. It tastes like a milkshake. It's incredible. And it's an entirely raw milk. And if you can get raw milk, that's great. Because yeah. then you have your raw milk, your raw cream, your kefirs, your cheeses. There's just so many things that come out of dairy. And it just makes the diet that much easier. So you don't even have to take the big step to the raw meat. If you, if it's well, actually, I want, I want to start eating raw meat again. I'm trying to figure out how, to, how I do it and do it sensibly. Um, and uh, how you know I, I don't feel comfortable just going to the grocery store and picking up some raw chopped meat, but given the fact that I believe that most commercial uh, meats are mis- are not handled properly, and it probably is wise to cook those because I believe that there may be fecal matter or other issues. Oh really. yeah, I wouldn't grab any hamburger from the supermarket. That, that's exactly that my point. From yeah, cows. 
Yeah, yeah. So, you got to know the source for yeah. that. Especially you can do ground. You can, you can grind your own too, but you can you can grind raw meat and eat it with uh, onion, mushroom, and raw cheese. And it's great. Like it's really good. As I told you, another recipe I did with ground beef was a raw avocado and raw honey, which is amazing. You don't even know you're eating raw meat. It, in that one, it depends on the state of the avocado because the avocado and the honey are, would blend and make this incredible, incredible flavor. And then you just mix it in with the ground meat. But I just take the steak and cut it and eat it. That's the best way I like it. And I'll do a pound a day. I've done two pounds a day. I can are there any are there any food. cuts that lend themselves to raw food eating because of the mouth feel that that are better than others? Any cuts of meat? I'm I'm getting sirloin. But it's called black Angus sirloin. They're known to be quite uh, tender in the first place. So I haven't really experimented and tried all the, these different cuts. So I usually want to take what I can get. I was eating mostly um, ground beef at one point and chicken and and. Uh, and the fish, uh, I don't like the chicken ground. I just like cutting chicken breast and eating it. Chicken's very lean. They'll tend to have a bit of some fat with it, but it, it doesn't it doesn't taste. I was surprised when I ate the raw chicken. I actually thought, you know, actually this might taste even better than uh, than when I was eating it cooked because I found it so dry when I ate it cooked. Yeah, before. right. But, but like I said, the, the incident where I would left it on the counter, uh, I had done that uh, several times and got really angry because I threw it out because I'd be afraid to eat it too. And I was just out of spite that I ate it. I looked at it and thought, I'm not throwing that out again. I think that was about the third time in two weeks. And I thought, I'm eating it. And, and <laughs> so you, I ate and it. You and didn't get, and you didn't get was, sick. You didn't no, get sick. No, no. And I did it again. And I realized, well, I didn't get sick last time. I'm not going to get sick this time. So I'm going to eat it. So Because I'll cut some and leave some on the counter, and I won't see it. Right. I'll forget I put it there. And then I'll put my hand on it five hours later, right? And oh, boy. Right. Now it doesn't matter. I'll just wrap it up and put it in the refrigerator and just eat it. It doesn't. Never been sick. The age meat purposely to treat cancers. The Eskimos fermented meat. The Chinese buried eggs for 25 years, and they called them century. I don't know why they called them century, and they only buried them for 25. But still, that's a long time to be underground. But today, Ajahn's on their planets. He will make what's called high meat. He'll age it for three months. He'll feed it to people for treating cancers, for raising the metabolism, all sorts of medicinal purposes. There's so much about food that we as a society do not know. When we come back, we're going to take a break here in a moment. When we come back, I want to ask you a couple questions about how to select a butcher because uh, I'm wondering if I go into a butcher and I tell him, look, I want to buy a certain cut of meat and I'm, I'm thinking of eating it raw, does he have an obligation to say, uh, oh, you know, I, I can't recommend that to you? Or, you know, I think a lot of them are probably worried about liability issues as well. So when we come back, I want to discuss that with you. We're talking with Randy Roach. We're talking about raw food eating. This is a very, very interesting subject. Uh, and uh, we'll be right back. Calamate Health is focused on making sure you're able to perform and look your best. They are a leader in game-changing supplements and cosmetic products. Whether you want to increase strength, expedite recovery, facilitate soft tissue repair, or reduce deep wrinkles, Calamate Health has you covered. Calamate Health is also the home to Dr. Seed's products such as BPC, BPC Plus, and the Chill Pill. All of my listeners can now get 20% off their first order with code TRY20. That's T-R-Y-2-0. This code can even be used on subscription orders. Visit shrnetwork.biz try 20 today and use code try20 for 20 percent off your first order are you ready to change the way you age of course you are that's why you're here juvacell is a new first of its kind dietary supplement that includes 10 key research-backed ingredients shown in studies to support lifespan things like resveratrol fisetin quercetin terostilbene sulforaphane turmeric all in a single dose you may have some of these ingredients already but juvacell is the first to combine them all into a single product to support your lifespan it's vegan non-gmo and sustainable live better longer with juvacell go to s shrnetwork.biz slash live better. Use code SHR and save 20% off today. When craving a snack, reach for select savory snack sugar-free Biltong, the healthy alternative to sugar-laden beef jerky. They use a fattier cut of beef, making it more tender and flavorful. For mealtime, choose from their 63 seasonings, which are sugar and additive-free. From chipotle rub to savory pumpkin spice, you'll find an option to suit your palate. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash SSS today. Use code SHR15. 
15 to save 15% on any meat snack or seasoning. Savor the flavor today. Getting a massage post-workout is a proven strategy to facilitate better recovery. Getting to massage therapists can be difficult and expensive, especially in these times. The solution is the Meteor, a heated massage ball from Milestorm. Reduce pain and soreness and expedite recovery with the Meteor's research-backed vibration settings and therapeutic heat. It's convenient for travel and works on any body part. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash meteor and use code SHR15 for 15% off and free shipping if you buy two or more. Start recovering better today. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said that all disease begins in your gut. That's why it's so important to protect yourself with boosted immune system. If you drink coffee, tea, smoothies, or really any beverage in the morning, and you're looking for a tasty way to start your day and defend yourself against harmful bacteria, then I have just the thing for you to try. It's called the Ultimate Immunity Protection Stack, and it was put together by my friends over at Bioptimizers. Their immunity stack has three products which contain over 18 natural herbs and probiotic blends formulated to fight and eliminate bad bacteria like E. coli, salmonella, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, and repair compromised gut lining. It also includes psychobiotics, which help Help increase serotonin and happy chemicals to naturally elevate your mood, performance, and cognitive function with no side effects or dependencies. It's a great addition to your morning routine, and it tastes amazing. Just stir it into any beverage, sip, and enjoy. It's the ultimate way to boost your immune system right before the holiday season. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash protect and use code SHR10 and save an extra 10% off on the... You won't find this deal or stack anywhere else for fast shipping and the best deal. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash protect today. By now, you're a aware of the cognitive benefits of nootropics. My friends over at Pure Nootropics are giving my listeners 10 to 30% off their already great prices on over 70 high quality nootropics. Stock up on DHM so you can feel good after your holiday celebration or try the superhuman stack to boost your brain and energize your day. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash pure that's p-u-r-e and start saving today. This is the Superhuman Channel, doing reps with the weight of the world. You're listening to the Superhuman Channel. We're ripped and we're ready. Jumping higher, lifting more. It's Superhuman Radio. We're back with Superhuman Radio. We're talking today with Randy Roach about raw food eating. So, Randy, if I find the butcher, do I do I tell him, look, I, I, I want to buy this meat specifically to eat raw so that he handles it differently? I would mention that just in case, they, especially if you don't know him, because they, he's going to realize as soon as you say, that, man, he's going to eat it raw. I better give him my best cut because you don't know what they're doing there. I, I like to know the butcher. I know my butcher. He's a friend. Plus, I, other sources will go, go. The markets usually have uh, good sources because they're getting it usually from their own farm and, and they look after the animal quite well. Can I make uh, mention a website? Please, yeah. Um, Dr. Ogden's Bonded Plants, he really is the public expert on this. He's been in the nutrition for a long, long time, and he's actually quite amazing. He's written two books called We Want to Live, and the other one is A Recipe for Living Without Disease. Jim Ellingson runs a, um, a website and a newsletter for, with all Ogden's material that's searchable. It is at www.wewanttolive.com. That's not the word to, that's the number two. So it's W E W A N T to L-I-V-E dot com. And there's a, a lot of material. And he, like I said, publicly, he is the expert on this topic. He even told me like a year ago, uh, four years ago, because I was a consultant and training people, and I, he said you should l- wait at least a year before you you advise people in this area. And he was right. I waited four. This is, I'm only talking about it publicly now, four years later. I have some close friends, obviously, who are interested and followed it as well. But it, it's... It is a different area. It's much different than changing from a, to a low carb diet or a low why, why, diet. Why did he su- why did he suggest that you wait? Because he wanted because you should be consuming it for a year so that people could see that you're still healthy, or well, you should. Why, why did he suggest that you wait? Probably because I didn't know what I was talking about. Most people, when you get into something, they, it's, it, they're really emotional, really uh, invigorated. Uh, passionate about it, and they really don't know the topic. And oh, yeah, but Randy, but Randy, all well, that means is you get a radio show like me <laughs> when you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> or you get on one, yeah, as a guest, right? Okay. The, uh, but he, it, he was right. Not only do you have to educate, you have, you have to learn where it came from, why are you eating it that way, and the effects on you, because it's not... If you had a lifestyle where you had a lot of drugs, like I had a lot of medications in me from my medications, and 
it's not an immediate yeehaw and cartwheeling around because it, there's a process of healing, and a lot of times it's not comfortable. And it's you must learn your body and see how you react to it, and then you can start introducing people to do the same thing as you did, learn the process. It's, you just don't go through the motions. If people just go through the motions, even in an exercise or eating, they won't last because they don't understand what they're doing and why they're doing it. Right. So it's a process you go through to learn the food, learn the history of it. Why are we eating raw? Because it's not publicly acceptable, socially outcast, but it's just, times are changing. More and more people are eating this way, even in Toronto up here. Some restaurants are starting to serve raw. And uh, California, it's, California, it's, the biggest, the biggest growth segment in the restaurant industry in California is raw food restaurants. Oh, now, I, too, I, I that's where yeah, I that's yeah, where Ajinis is located. Oh, really? Yeah, and he's opening clinics in, in, in Thailand right now too. He's, he gets all around. He goes does workshops all over all over the world, and he does iridology and stuff. But his story, you should read his bio, autobiographies. Absolutely, you almost think this should be on a movie. It's it's just unbelievable what he's gone through, and what he's learned. And his expertise, and I have another gentleman I consult with who's just as knowledgeable. But he, like I said, he just he stays very low key. And so we can we can get more information out. We want the number two and the word live. We want yes, to dot live com. dot com. Okay, that's Jim Ellingson's website. It's a newsletter and it's based on Augustus' work, and he does a periodical newsletter that comes out. And, and the books are available to be searched online if you. Uh, if you want to become a member of the of the website, you can actually search Ajahn's material online. I had his books when I could still see. I was able to read them, and I read, I read through them all several times. Now, should should someone start slow with raw eating? I mean, start with raw vegetables, raw juices. Obviously, I'm already drinking raw milk, and then kind of ease into raw meat to let the body become oh, yeah, adjusted definitely. to these new... Uh, uh, you know, the, the, obviously, these the, the, the body has to get adjusted. I would imagine, right? Yeah, you just you just stress yourself out. It, it, you'll, it's a stress on your body to shock and change like that. But it's a stress to have to have everything to go at one time because you think, okay, where am I going to get this? I have to get this. I get that. I, I've got to make sure I have this. It just take your time. I'm just figuring I time. can get raw fish real easy. I just have to find oh, a yeah. sushi supplier and see see if I can buy raw salmon, raw tuna. I mean, yeah. you know. You start there, and like I said, start with the smoothies, raw eggs, get a good quality. Uh, Let, let's egg. talk about raw eggs for a second, because there's a lot of a lot of people out there still feel that raw egg is not a, a good thing to eat because it's too hard to digest, and it also potentially blocks the uptake of certain vitamins. Now, you addressed that in a conversation we had, so let's talk about that. Yeah, the avidin is an amino acid called avidin that will block the biotin, which is a B, one of the B complex, and it'll from being absorbed, but. I said I know several gentlemen. Dave Draper is one of them. He's been eating raw eggs for three decades, and it's how much exactly, how much biotin is blocked. You know that it does, the evidence in the egg white, so you can eat egg yolk. But I just highly re- recommend you eat the whole egg. The whole egg is there. The whole food is there for a reason. It's, it synergistically works together. And I've never heard of any issues. I've just never heard of any issues. You know, I think I think what happens with, especially with bodybuilders, um, you know, they tend to focus on a particular food. Maybe they they rotate maybe three or two or three to four or five different foods in in a daily schedule. And so perhaps maybe if you were eating three dozen raw eggs a day or two dozen raw eggs a day, there would be a problem. But if you're eating a couple three raw eggs a day. Uh, like in a smoothie, as you suggest. Geronda ate what Geronda recommended up to three dozen raw eggs a day with a quart of raw cream. For the guys who wanted to, he called that his hormone diet. For anybody who wanted to try to build muscle, to me, I don't think you need, the, from one to three, depending on your size, but it was three. I got to tell you what Don Holworth ate while he trained for the uh, 1967 Mr. America. Don, now he cooked his eggs, but he ate three dozen raw eggs, a quart of cream, and two pounds of meat a day. Plus two or three cups of real Blair's protein powder. That was what the cream was for. Mixed the cream with the protein powder. He reconstituted the milk and egg protein back with the fat. And the, that's a lot of eggs. That's yeah. a lot of eggs. Yeah. But Duranda would say, do do it raw. Mix them raw. Mix a dozen eggs with a with a pint of uh, with a pint or a quart of cream, and uh, just wig it down during the day. That's, uh, that's a lot of raw eggs. Well, we're coming up on the end of the show here. I want to give a couple of websites out. First of all, I want to give the website for your book. I would imagine you address raw eating in your book, correct? I, is that, no, my, I have no personal agenda in my book. I'm re- trying to remain objective. I, I talk about our man Tanny, and I talk okay. about the people who did eat raw, but I, I don't want to inflict my, gotcha. my way. Yeah, so, but, but the, the, there is some mention in there, obviously, where, where appropriate. The, the, website, the, the website is muscle, smoke, and mirrors.com, correct? It's A-N-D, or is it the ampersand sign? No, it's Andy. That's correct. Right. Muscle, it's muscle, smoke, and mirrors. 
dot com. This book is coming out in 2007. It's, it's going to be a fantastic book. I can't wait to get it. I'm actually going to take a week off to read it. Um, and You'll then, need a week. It's about 800 pages. I know. That's what you told me. That's why I said I'll have to take a week off because I don't read very fast anyway. Uh, any, uh, and the, uh, the other website that you should check out if you have more interest in uh, learning more about raw foods, even if you don't want to take the jump to raw meat, there are lots of other raw foods out there that could be beneficial. Enzymes, clearly, I've done a lot of research in enzymes, and enzymes are very important for anti-aging or age management because as we age, the enzymes are depleted, and our body cannot convert proteins and vitamins to the, to the essential uh, uh, beneficial for- forms that they need to be. So the website is we want to the number 2 and live.com if you want to learn more about uh, raw food eating. We've been talking today with Randy Roach. Randy, as always, thank you very, very much for being on the show today. Oh, you're welcome. By now, you're aware of the cognitive benefits of nootropics. My friends over at Pure Nootropics are giving my listeners 10 to 30% off their already great prices on over 70 high-quality nootropics. Stock up on DHM so you can feel good after your holiday celebration, or try the Superhuman Stack to boost your brain and energize your day. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash pure, that's P-U-R-E, and start saving today. TaylorMade Health is focused on making sure you're able to perform and look your best. They are a leader in game-changing supplements and cosmetic products. Whether you want to increase strength, expedite recovery, facilitate soft tissue repair, or reduce deep wrinkles, TaylorMade Health has you covered. TaylorMade Health is also the home to Dr. Seed's products such as BPC, BPC Plus, and the Chill Pill. All of my listeners can now get 20% off their first order with code TRY20. That's T-R-Y-2-0. This code can even be used on subscription orders. Visit shrnetwork.biz slash try 20 today and use code try20 for 20 percent off your first order do you remember those delicious toaster pastries you had when you were a kid you know the rectangular sugar-filled snacks well guess what legendary foods has just made low carb toaster pastry this is the first of its kind and honestly these things are amazing they have three to four net carb less than one gram of sugar and nine grams of protein you can eat them right out of the wrapper or lightly toast them The only question is, which flavor, strawberry or brown sugar cinnamon? They're available at eatlegendary.com and Amazon. New Mass Pro Synthogen X2 just upped its own legendary game. To distance itself even further from the rest of the pack, Synthogen X2 now has double the key active ingredients. If you've ever wondered what steroid-like recovery feels like, Synthogen X2 delivers. See why others compare it favorably to powerful bodybuilding drugs at synthogen.com. Mass Pro Synthogen. When you train with it, you'll gain with it. Are you ready to change the way you age? Of course you are. That's why you're here. Juvacel is a new first-of-its-kind dietary supplement that includes 10 key research-backed ingredients shown in studies to support lifespan. Things like resveratrol, fisetin, quercetin, terostilbene, sulforaphane, turmeric, all in a single dose. You may have some of these ingredients already, but Juvacel is the first to combine them all into a single product to support your lifespan. It's vegan, non-GMO, and sustainable. Live better, longer with with Juvacel. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash live better. Use code SHR and save 20% off today. When craving a snack, reach for Select Savory Snack Sugar-Free Biltong, the healthy alternative to sugar-laden beef jerky. They use a fattier cut of beef, making it more tender and flavorful. For mealtime, choose from their 63 seasonings, which are sugar and additive-free. From chipotle rub to savory pumpkin spice, you'll find an option to suit your palate. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash SSS today. You Use code SHR15 to save 15% on any meat snack or seasoning. Savor the flavor today. This is the Superhuman Channel, where brawn and brains finally meet. 